So, enough of the parasites for a little bit. Uh, there are some parasites in this phylum, but most of them are free-living, just found uh, in soil, in marine habitats, in freshwater habitats. These are the ciliophora. They are cilia-bearing. They don't have flagella, they have cilia to help them get around. Uh, so they are uh, pretty complex for single-celled organisms. They have complex behaviors. Uh, they have some complex organelles that make them seem like they are tiny little animals, especially so because they have things like an oral groove and a cytostome or a cell mouth and a cytopharynx or a cell throat uh, and a cytoproct or a cell anus. Uh, we also talked about ciliophora last semester, especially in regards to this particular organelle, the contractile vacuole. And in ciliophorans that live in fresh water, this is important for making sure that you don't get diluted to death uh, because your semi-permeable membrane uh, can allow water to enter the cell and will make you swell up unless you uh, get rid of that fresh water. Uh, so cilia can be arranged in a number of different ways. They can be uh, compacted together into structures called uh, cirri, or just one is a cirrus. Or they can ring the cytostome to form a structure called a membranelle. Uh, and like the apicomplexans, they have a tiny skin or a pellicle that has alveoli in it, and they can produce these structures called extrasomes. Uh, and in the lab, when you saw a vorticella, you might have seen that they kind of look like they're, they have like a, a tether, or they kind of look a little bit like a balloon on a string. Uh, and that string that they can use to bounce around a little bit when they're still attached is called a myoneme. Uh, and in addition to vorticella, uh, we've got other, a lot of other uh, genera and species that we saw in the lab, things like paramecium, uh, Euplodes. Uh, we probably didn't see didinium in the lab, but that's a, a freshwater species that's very common. Uh, in this area, and you probably saw stentor in the lab, and if you didn't, I'm going to show it to you in a minute or two here. Uh, there are also a number of important uh, symbionts that live in the rumen, or the special uh, stomach of the fermentation chamber of animals like sheep and goats and cattle. Alright, so it's time for us to draw a picture. So I'm going to ask you to draw along with me. I'm going to try something new and different. First, I have to get rid of my cat. He's been sitting in my lap, trying to give me taxoplasmosis. Oh, she's coming back. Go on, kitty cat. All right, so today we're going to draw a paramecium. Now we're going to do this. Let's see, I'm going to get my pen. And I'm going to use black, make it easy to see. So when we're drawing a paramecium, hope you're drawing along with me, uh, we sort of draw a, uh, almost like a, like a bean shape. Okay. And... All right, so here we've got, this is gonna be our cytostome or our cell mouth leading into a cytopharynx or our cell throat. Uh, so food items are gonna follow this oral groove as it's called uh, until they get to the end of the cytopharynx and they can form a food vacuole. Uh, this food vacuole can be attached to lysosomes or other structures uh, which contain vacuoles that contain uh, enzymes to help digest the food. And as it's digested, eventually those food vacuoles are going to end up <coughs> at the cytoproct or the cell anus where they will be released again. 
So that's how paramecium eats. Uh, it also has to have a nucleus. I'll just sort of draw some chromatin in here. Some paramecium have several nuclei within a one single cytoplasm. Uh, often they will also have contractile vacuoles, which look like this. this. I can draw this way better when I'm in the class. When I'm not using a teeny little digital pencil. And hopefully I got it all. And now I have to label it. Okay, so we've got all our parts here. Did I get them all? Almost. Oops. Oh, no, and I lost my picture. Uh, rats. All right, so let's just do it again real quick. Ooh. Uh -huh. Ah, rats. Okay, let's do it again. One way of learning to do it by repetition. So there's our sort of bean shape. There's our oral groove. There's our cytosome that goes into our cytopharynx. Food vacuole ending up in the cytoproct. Nucleus. Uh, contractile vacuole to help pump out water. Got these ducts that lead the water into the vacuole, which gets bigger and bigger as it fills with water, and then it squeezes all the fresh water out. And then right on the surface, we've got cilia. Are you really going to watch me draw all of these all the way around? Watch me do it in lecture. It won't be so boring. You'll be glad you came to lecture. All right, so let's uh, label oral groove. Where is that? Oral groove, oral groove. There it is, the oral groove. All right, so here's the oral groove. And let's see, make it easier. I'll make a different color. How about that? Good, we'll make the cytostome or cell mouth. Uh, in red, right there, got a cytopharynx, we will make green, why not, cytopharynx, cytopharynx, down there, food vacuole, let's actually make the food vacuole, let's just go down the line here, blue, There it is, cytoproct, which make that brown, right? Why not? Oh, I don't have brown. I like it's cyan. And, well, cytoproct. How many colors do I have left? Oh, magenta. Right. Contractile vacuole. You're going to be right there. Oh no, go away. And like the cilia, all these here, these here cilia are in yellow. All right, so there we go. There's our labeled paramecium drawing. You should be able to draw it at least as terribly as that, uh, if not a little bit better. And uh, pick up there in the next video.